Well, this is Hampton. I'm just upstream from Hampton Court, getting ever closer to London. And that very handsome building across there is Hampton House, built by Robert Adam for the actor David Garrick, who also built that rather sweet little temple as a sort of shrine to William Shakespeare. There was a sculpture of Shakespeare inside it, modelled apparently on Garrick himself. If I could think of any appropriate Shakespeare lines to quote at this point, I would, but I can't, so I won't. So to Hampton Court, the unmistakable grandeur of Hampton Court Palace. Originally built by Cardinal Wolsey, confiscated by Henry VIII, said to be haunted by at least two of his queens, and then added to by Christopher Wren on the orders of William and Mary. So this is Teddington Lock, or rather locks, plural. The last and largest locks on the river before we reach the estuary, and it's here at Teddington that the river becomes tidal. So from now on, I suppose, I begin to sense the presence of the sea. I begin to near journey's end. Well, I have to pause here just for a moment. I'm just upstream from Putney Bridge, and it's where Beverly Brook meets the Thames. It's not particularly pretty, in fact, anything but. But this is the point at which I bid a final farewell to the Thames towpath. I've been walking along it for more than 150 miles, ever since Lechlaid, and uh, it has served me very well indeed. So farewell, faithful towpath. Now the walk through London itself begins. Over there the Lotts Road power station, generating all the electricity for the London Underground. Here the unexpected jewel of the 18th century church, St Mary's Battersea. The Albert Bridge, unexpectedly delicate, perhaps too delicate, not quite strong enough. And the Battersea power station, redundant these past 30 years, still an empty shell. And Millbank Tower, scene of far too many dull, predictable political party press conferences, and Lambeth Palace, home to the Archbishop of Canterbury. So here I am at Westminster. The Houses of Parliament, Big Ben. I cannot imagine that at any point along its entire length does this River Thames now such a mighty, grand river, feel prouder than it does as it flows past the Palace of Westminster. And downstream from Westminster, the London Eye, this is tourist London. The South Bank, the National Theatre, far too much concrete for my taste. The incomparable beauty of St Paul's Cathedral, seen across the Millennium Bridge. The reconstructed Globe Theatre. The remains of the 12th century Winchester Palace, beautiful, tucked away in the shadow of Southwark Cathedral. Then the headquarters of the London Assembly, the Tower of London, of course, Tower Bridge, and the wonders of Greenwich, the Cutty Sark, the Royal Naval College that great mushroom that we now know as the O2. And then, this. The Thames Barrier at Woolwich, journey's end. You can probably hear the waves lapping and the gulls squawking. I feel a sense of achievement having made it, 184 miles, 15 days of walking. I also feel a sense of sadness because I've got very fond of this river as I have followed it all the way, watching its first tiny gurgles as a little brook up there 
in those muddy Cotswold meadows. I've watched it grow up into adolescence and then adulthood and then become the proud, mighty river as it flows through London and out towards the sea. I will see plenty more of it, of course, in the years to come. After all, I am still a Londoner. But from now on, every time I cross a bridge over the River Thames or walk along its banks, I think I may be tempted just to whisper a little greeting. Hi, River. Remember me? I'm Robin. We got to know each other quite well, once upon a time.